Canada to be here with us today. Yes! Now, if you don't know her yet, please listen to this. Lisa is often referred to as a communication expert and transformation catalyst because of her ability to communicate in such a way that creates shifts in people's minds and empowers audiences to move forward with increased confidence, clarity, and impact. With over 25 years of experience combined with her background as a speech-language pathologist and many other certifications, I could go on and on and on, Lisa specializes in working with highly motivated women, and I think we have some in the room tonight, right? And um, in expanding um, their leadership capacity and sharpen their communication skills so they can impact more lives. Would you help me welcome Lisa Vanderquack? Hello, everyone. So I want to ask you a question. Who is ready to step into the fullness of your destiny in 2024? Yeah? Are you ready? You've probably been ready for a long time, right? But you're, if you're like a lot of women, you're like, I'm ready. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. Have you ever asked yourself that? Have you ever asked God that? God, what am I supposed to do? What is my destiny? Well, today I want to share with you a perspective that God showed me that hopefully will set you free to help you step into the fullness of your destiny in 2024. So I used to be in campus ministry. After my career in speech-language pathology, I spent about 17 and a half years working with university students in campus ministry. And I, one of the questions that I would get over and over and over and over was, Lisa, what am I supposed to do with my life? And I began to think about this, like, God, why, why do we struggle so much with knowing what we're supposed to do? And I went to the Lord and I said, God, what is destiny? What does it mean, destiny? I actually don't see the word in the Bible. And he said something to me that really shifted my thinking. And today, if you are serious about stepping into your destiny, then I want you to really consider that maybe you've been told a lie. Because I believe destiny is not about what you do, but it's about who you become. And I'm going to show you what God told me, and hopefully this is going to be able to shift you into a whole new level. Are you ready to get into that whole new level? Because I don't know about you ladies, but God is on the move. Do you see him? And he's calling his daughters to a whole new level. In fact, he's calling his daughters to be what I call holy disruptors. Are you a holy disruptor? Because we're made in his image, right? And I don't know about you, but my Bible says he disrupted a lot of people when he taught. He disrupted a lot of people. Well... How you respond to two types of invitations from the Lord will determine how quickly and how fully you're going to step into your destiny. One of those invitations is the invitation to decide. Say decide. Do you know that women have a hard time making decisions? Yeah, a lot of women have a hard time making decisions. And I've discovered that one of the reasons is because they fear missing out on some other opportunity. Did you know that the word decision comes from two Latin words that means to cut away? So what does that mean for you? When you make a decision to go for something, you are simultaneously making a decision not to go for a whole lot of other things. That's built within the word itself. So subconsciously, you know that. So when you make a decision to go for God, you are simultaneously saying no to a whole lot of other things. The first time God invited me to make a decision when I was 15 years old, I'd been brought up in a home that was rampant with alcohol, violent. I was the youngest of eight children. We weren't a Christian home. I believed in God, but I didn't see any evidence of him anywhere. And so at the age of 15, my mom came into my bedroom 
and said, Lisa, your dad and I are getting a divorce. And I'm like, yes, finally, I'm going to be free. Come on, anybody ever felt that way about something, right? She left my bedroom. Immediately, I had this overwhelming sadness come over me. And this longing for the love that I never knew, the love of a father. You see, I closed my heart off to him. And as I stood there in my bedroom wrestling in my heart, I'm like, no, I don't need him. And yet there was this sadness. And instantly I heard this voice. It was an audible voice. I don't know if it was an angel or if it was God. And the voice said, read the Bible. Now, you have to know, we didn't own a Bible. I'd never read a Bible in my life. I didn't know anybody who owned a Bible. And I don't know if I thought that or I said that out loud, that I didn't know anybody who owned a Bible. Because the next thing the voice said was, write your uncle and he'll send you one. So I wrote an uncle of mine, who to this day is not born again. And he sent me a Gideon Bible. Anybody know what a Gideon Bible is? So I began to read that Bible. And I began to be enthralled with this love of Jesus. So I began to read in the New Testament. This man Jesus and how he loved people. And how he spoke about people. And he talked about the love of a father. I, I want that. I want to know that love. I want to love like he loved. And instantly, when I had that revelation of that love and that desire, I instantly saw everything inside of me that kept me from that love. You ever had an experience like that? It was an encounter with God. And he was inviting me to make a decision. He was inviting me to decide if I wanted to go all in. Do you really want this? Because when you do this, it means that you got to leave all that stuff behind. There's a whole lot of stuff that you have to uproot and leave behind. So that was the day I went all in. Say all in. I decided to go for it. And instantly things changed in my heart. And that began my journey as a believer. You know, Abraham had a similar experience. God called him and said, Abraham, I have a land for you, a territory. In fact, I have many generations that are going to come from you. Now, did Abraham see any of that? He didn't see a thing. But he had a choice to make. Am I going to trust this God, his promises? Or am I going to say, God, show me first, then I'll trust you. Or then I'll take it out. Come on, let's be honest. How often do we say to God, God, show me first, then I'll step out. We say, where is my destiny? Where is this territory that you've given me? And then I'll step into it. But that's not how the kingdom works, ladies. The kingdom works like this. I have something for you. Will you trust me? Will you take my hand and let me guide you? And so simultaneously, Abraham had to choose to trust a God he never knew for a land he never saw for a people that seemed impossible because he had nothing, no children. But when he made that decision, he simultaneously cut away, left the familiar, all that was familiar. In fact, so much so in Hebrews, it says this about the him and the other heroes of the faith, that they were so convinced that they, it says that they remembered no more what they had left behind. For if they had remembered what they had left behind, they would have found an opportunity to go back. But they didn't because their eyes were fixed on a better future. Their eyes were, their eyes were fixed on something better. That's the decision that God is calling all, each one of us. Now, ladies, it starts with one decision. Maybe you've never made that first decision, but if it starts with one decision, then it becomes a series of decisions along the way. Why? Because God wants you to become everything he's created you to be. So the second invitation you need to respond to is the invitation to dialogue with God. I'm not talking about this casual conversation. Thais talked about, you know, this walk in the park. It's not a walk in the park. 
God wants to pour his love on you, and he will. But we're talking about a conversation that's a two-way conversation that goes to the heart of things. Have you ever noticed that God doesn't like superficial talk? Like, at least not for very long. He might, you know, for a little bit say, hey, how are you doing? And then it's like, whoa, goes right straight to the heart. <laughs> it's like, great, right? Because he is more concerned about your freedom and your fulfillment and your destiny than you are sometimes. And he knows what it takes to get you there. So the second invitation is dialogue. The word dialogue comes from the Greek word that means dialogos, which is where we get the word logos. And it means this. This is kind of cool. It means words that move. The word of God is living and active, right? So when we dialogue with God in his word or face to face, it, it is meant to move us. It's meant to change us. It's meant to transform us. This dialogue is meant to be the place of us to become who God has called us to be. The problem is, when it gets uncomfortable, we back away. What I have discovered in this place of dialogue, when I began to engage in dialogue, God began to do a few things. He began to challenge my perceptions. Are you okay with God challenging your perceptions? Have you ever heard the, the phrase, your perceptions are your reality? Right? Meaning what you believe to be true becomes your reality. The Bible talks about it is as you are in your heart, as you think in your heart, so you are. Right? Did you know that your perceptions can be distorted? God began to show me this one time. He said, your deceptions, Lisa, are distorted. And you're, if left unchanged, they will lead you into deception. Your perception can lead you into deception if unchanged. And he began to show me that this one time I was in university and I was full-time in university and I was working three or four jobs because I needed to pay my bills. I didn't have wealthy parents to send me to university. And I'm praying, God, you said in your word that if I asked that you would provide, that you would answer my prayers. How come you're not answering my prayers? God said, well, I am. So what do you mean? He said, well, I sent someone to provide, but you didn't like the answer. You see, when I, was, when I was a child and my parents got divorced, my dad refused to give my mom child support. So my perception of that was, I'm not valuable enough. I need to take care of myself. I can't depend on anyone else. So my perception, my belief formulated my actions. So here I am praying to God. And at that point, I had already started to reconnect with my dad because I wanted to build a relationship with him. I, God was changing me, and I wanted to reach out to him. So my dad would phone me, and he'd say, Lisa, do you need any money? I'm good, Dad. I'm good. Have you ever done that? Meanwhile, you're like, God, I need some money. And you're stressing out, pay your bills. He's, my dad's over here, Lisa, do you need any money? No, I'm good, Dad. God, I need some money. God said, I'm trying to answer your prayers. But you don't like the answer. God said, your perception has deceived you. The other thing that God did and began to do was he, he began to disrupt my comfort zone. He began, I know Thais was talking about that, talking about the magazine. I'm too busy, God. God likes to disrupt our comfort zone. He did this all of the time in the scriptures. In, in Mark 9, 13, no, 7, 13, somewhere around there, it says, he's talking to the religious leaders, and Jesus said something really interesting to the religious leaders. He said, you nullify the word of God by your tradition. That means you cancel out everything that is in the word, everything that is true, by following your traditions, meaning if you hold something to be more important, your way of thinking, your way of acting, your way of living, if you, find, if you hold that to be more important than my word, you're actually canceling the word and leaving it of no power to you. It says that God is watching over his word to perform it, but we may be blocking it. 
So he wants to disrupt your comfort zone where you feel, oh, I'm just going to do this to make myself feel at peace or security. And God began to speak to me in that way as well, began to disrupt what was going on in my life to say, hey, if you want to become who you're called to be, then you need to trust me. You need to not, you need to do things the way that, that you see in the word and not base it on your past or your experience or your family. I'll give you an example. A friend of mine, Stacy Campbell, anybody know who Stacy Campbell is? She actually lives here in California. She's a Canadian. She was brought up in a brethren background where women wore head coverings. Women didn't speak in church. They didn't preach. They didn't prophesy, any of that. So she was in one of our campus ministry meetings because she was a student. And in this meeting, she experienced some things that were contrary to her tradition. She saw women teach. She saw women preach. She saw the gifts of the Spirit in operation. And in fact, someone had given her a prophetic word, her and her husband. She went home because she was a, a student of the word. She went and searched the scriptures. She said, God, what is going on here? My tradition tells me women are not supposed to speak. Women are not supposed to teach. And God showed her in the word. Her heart was for truth. And in that place, the Holy Spirit came upon her. And she began to do all kinds of things. Now, God is using her all over the world as a prophetic voice. He shook up her comfort zone because her tradition was nullifying the word of God. Maybe in our families, in your education system. Oh, we don't do that. What does the word of God say? So if you're going to be a holy disruptor, if you're going to be one who walks in the fullness of what God has called you to be, you need to be willing to allow God to disrupt your comfort zone. To challenge your perceptions and disrupt your comfort zone. The other thing that God does in this dialogue is that he calls you, he speaks to you from your destiny. He speaks to you as if you're already living your destiny. Why is this important? Because it's in this place that he wants you to know who you are. I forgot to tell you something. When I asked God, what is destiny? This is what he said to me. He said, eternal life. So we think of maybe heaven. So he then t- brought me to John 17, 3. And this is what it says. This is eternal life. To know God and his son that he sent. In the Passion Translation, it says to know and experience God and to know and experience Jesus, the son. So how can you know and experience them? In dialogue. When you make a decision to go all in, to trust him no matter what. And you engage in heart-centered conversation, two-way conversation, to allow him to speak into your life, to challenge your perceptions, to disrupt your comfort zone, and to speak to you from the place of destiny. He did this to Abraham. He called him a father of many nations before he even had a son. He spoke to Gideon. Gideon was hiding out in the wine press, feeling defeated by his enemies. You ever feel that way? You want to just hide out? God came to him and said, mighty warrior. What did Gideon have to do? He would have to make a decision. Is that me, God? He would have to make a decision to believe God beyond his feelings and beyond his circumstances. And then once he did that, begin to engage in God to get to know and experience God. Because in that place, you get to know and experience who you are. And in that place, God works in you, moves in you to become who you're called to be. So I want to submit to you, if you want to make 2024 the year that you step into your destiny, you need to make a decision. It's not about what you do. It's about who you become. You need to decide to go all in. And you need to decide that you're going to dialogue with God and allow him to work in your life, to help you become who you're meant to be. Because guess what happens? When you become who you're meant to be, it doesn't really matter what you do. You can do a multitude of things. Look at the Proverbs 31 woman. So my question to you today is this. Are you ready to decide to go all in? No, I'm, I'm serious. 
It's like, I don't want you to say it. I want you to even write it down. You can say, God, I'm going all in. I don't care if I see it. I don't care what the outcome is. I am going all in to pursue you, to know and experience you. Because I know when I do that, I will know me. I will know who I am, and I will become who you've called me to be. And out of that, I'm already walking in my destiny. So if you are ready to make a decision today just to say, I decide. I decide to go all in, God. I decide to go all in. Raise your hand. God sees it. And I bless you. And I thank you. Because guess what happens? When you go all in, God goes all in on you.